All right, well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Six Hidden Gems in Robot Console. Thanks for joining us. Today's plan is to demonstrate some of the tips and techniques for IBMI monitoring using our flagship robot message management tool known as Robot Console. And did you know it does more than just messages? We're gonna talk about that today. My name is Chuck Lasinski. I'm the Director of Technical Solutions here at Help Systems. And uh, joined today with by Terry Preston, longtime technical support analyst. And uh, Terry, you said you've been with Help Systems how long now? 28 years. And you know, I still look just like that picture. It's ah, awesome. You do. I, I noticed you're not sharing your camera <laughs> this morning. No, no, it's, uh, it's too early for me yet. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to turn off my camera now. It's probably enough of looking at me and we're going to start with a, a polling question, a little bit about logistics too for today's uh presentation. Um it's going to be 45 minutes long, mostly live demo. All right. And uh so the first polling question is we want to know a little bit about your uh management of your system. Do you use robot? Uh do you have some homegrown tools, manual processes? Maybe you have another vendor tool for monitoring IBMI. Uh, we're very curious. Um, we've got some super passionate customers out there. We just love working with our customers because um, they get it, right, Terry? Right, yep. And I love the challenge when they call in and they have something new they want to do. I like figuring it out. You're particularly you good at that. I, you know, you're kind of our ace when it comes to uh you know they want to do this why do you suppose <laughs> why do you suppose they want to do that <laughs> and how are they how can i do it yep exactly. exactly okay let's close the poll and uh share the results this is interesting terry oh nice i, yeah. I love seeing that many people using robot that's yeah. awesome and you know, there are some homegrown tools out there that some people use mm -hmm. along with robot. And of course, there's probably some manual processes. So maybe you'll pick up some tips today about some things that console can do for you that maybe you didn't know. And uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully that'll pay off for you. All right. So let's right. let's jump in, first of all, to the agenda. Terry. Yeah. So first we're gonna look at give you a little introduction to what robot console does for 75% of you you got a pretty good idea. The rest of you, you're gonna love it. We're gonna talk about six hidden gems. These are some of our favorites, but I will tell you there's more than six out there. We're just gonna hit the highlights. And then my good friend Chuck, Chuck is gonna do all these live demos. So I get the fun part. See what's going on. I know you do, it's awesome. <laughs> and at the very end, we're gonna ask, some, ask if you have any questions. I uh, think we should ask we our audience. Well, we're going to question our audience a little bit. All right. Yes. Tell yes, us a little bit about are. console alert, Terry. Oh, my goodness. Console. Console you're going to install on every system, every partition out there. And once it's installed, it is up and running, and it's checking QSIS Opera for messages. You can set it up to monitor your vital resources, critical jobs running, subsystems that might be down, CPU percentage all kinds of things with resources. Once you start using resources, you're gonna love it. We also can monitor things like IFS logs. You've noticed over the years that you have a number of processes now that don't send messages out to a message queue, or they don't even put them in the job log. So you have to manually go in there and monitor that. With console and application log monitoring, you can monitor those IFS logs for critical messages and be alerted on them pretty quickly, immediately actually. And we also can monitor system logs. So we can look at QOT journey for those security issues. We can monitor FTP puts and gets and commands. So you can even automate some processes when an FTP process is complete, you can write a console instruction to say, let's kick off this job or let's do this process. And we can monitor QHIS. Now, QHIS, as you all know, is even more wordy than QSIS Opera. So we have some tools. We're not going to talk about them today, but uh, there's a command called RBC Sum QHIS you can run to help you see what you might want to monitor in QHIS. So if you look at it, run that command. 
And we feed all of these into message centers. Now, message centers are the holding place for the events that Console is monitoring. And this is where you can get a view of everything that's going on, and you can do automatic escalation or um, automate those message processes through the center. With escalation, you can use Robot Alert. Robot Alert is our alerting module that works with console, network, schedule, any of our other processes. It allows you to send an SMTP email out to any place that can receive an email. You can use a one-way email. Basically, you just get alerted. If you're fortunate and you have POP3, guess what? You can reply to those directly from your cell phone, from your desktop, wherever you got that email, you can reply to that message. Alert also does support SNMP, so you can route those right up to an enterprise manager and have that um, open a ticket for you. So Robot Alert is a great way to automate your escalation. Or you can use our Insight Browser. This allows you to set up a web browser interface for folks that don't have direct access to that eye. And they can go out and look at these messages through that browser interface. They can answer those messages. They can view them. They can escalate them from there. So it gives you a quick, easy way to see what messages are going on. Yeah, and Terry, I hope to be able to demonstrate that today. I hope we have, hopefully yeah. have enough time. <laughs> Insight is really cool. It's very cool. You'll well, like okay, it. so let's take it to the next level now. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about Robot Network on top of this. Oh, Robot Network gives you so many more, uh, so much more flexibility. With Robot Network, you can view all your systems. So maybe you've got five systems, and instead of bouncing between all five, you have one screen that you can see all the events coming up to. So one place to monitor everything. You can alert directly from here as well. So you can consolidate how you're doing your escalation. Yeah, and another point I was going to make too about Robot Network, Terry, is that if you're a Robot Schedule customer and you have multiple partitions, you can also do cross-partition reactivity using Robot Network as that backbone. You sure can. You can do that. And another nice thing with Robot Network is you have something called the Product Master, and it allows you to maintain console message sets, robot scheduled jobs in one place. So you create it in the master and you share it out to everybody. It's a very cool feature. Yep, and uh, so we'll awesome. hopefully have some time to look at Robot Network at the end and also it does, uh, it is incorporated in Insight as well. So exactly. you've, talked, you've talked a little bit about Robot Alert. Uh, so here's just some examples of alert messages that uh, I've collected, for instance, uh, uh, a CPA 5305, record not added, members full. So that's an inquiry message going out. And Terry, you said that that could be a two-way. That can be a two-way message with POP3. So you could get this message and maybe you always reply 9999. Just reply directly from your email. I want to yeah. point out that the subject line can be altered. So if you're looking at the subject line now going, I hate it, we can alter that in console or in, through the command. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And Terry, you mentioned uh, resource monitoring. So that second message, job queue is, is currently held. It's expected to be released. So that's an example of Robot Console doing its resource monitoring. Yep, you can see that it's the JBQ we initiate. So something that's gonna tell you about a job queue that never issues a message otherwise. Yeah, we're going to talk specifically about those about automated that. those messages. Right. And then the bottom one, this is an informational message that can get lost in that clutter. So you notice console is coming out and telling you, hey, your disk drive, that's going to start having problems. So you might want to get um, performing some action on it. And we've altered the, sub, the, the text to give you yeah. an idea of what you need to do. To be a little more informative for the you know the operations personnel who probably might not even know what an IBMI is, right? Exactly. Exactly. More and more. Hey, All right. Chuck, so that's the high level. We're done. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, let's let's dive in. Let's get uh, let's get this rolling with some live demonstration. Talk to us a little bit about what we're gonna what we're gonna do. Well, Chuck, first you're gonna look at that job and drill down into that to see um, things about the job log, how you can automate that immediately from the GUI. We're gonna look at making critical informational messages like CPF 0907 or that disk failure. How are you gonna make those stand out when they arrive? You can take standard message procedures and you can automate those. So you can automate those to call a program that you always do or to reply specifically. We're gonna look at how to leverage system monitoring. And these are your typical checklists that you might have at shift change or the operators have to check every so often. So we're gonna look at how to leverage those to check critical jobs, critical subsystems. Look to see if your output queues are getting too large. Most people use them for job queues, love it. We're gonna also check that, um, that log monitoring, that application log monitoring, how you can look at your IFS logs for critical errors and be alerted to them quickly. And then finally, we're gonna look at some consolidated message displays. So whether it's a single console GUI or you're looking at robot network or insight. So we're gonna check those out as well. And these aren't necessarily in priority order or anything. This just happened to be the order we, we chose. So let's start with number one. Yep, we're gonna start with the basics here with, um, with drilling into a job. Now, those of you that have had console, you've probably done this before. The message comes in to the message center. You're looking at it and you're like, well, what the heck's going on with this CPA 0701? Why am I getting it issued? So you can right click on that. You can do a display job. Pick display job log if you want to see the job log, or you can go into QHIS, you can print the job log, you can do a number of different things, but we're going to drill down into this job log. So when you do a display job and you look at that job log, it's going to take you directly into that job log. So you can see what has gone on before this issue occurred and determine how you're going to handle it, maybe who you're going to call to escalate this to. Um, and go from there. You can even drill into these messages a little bit. So you can check all of that out. Well, let's let's do that, Terry. I'm I'm sure. going to start with the I'm going to start with the robot console GUI. You know, we always talk about the GUI now. We really don't talk much uh, to the green screen. In fact, there's some functionality in the GUI that doesn't exist in the green screen at all like IFS monitoring. So, um, let me turn off my annotations. There we go. Okay. So, I've got my preferences set in my GUI so that it's gonna launch a couple of additional windows when it starts up. All right, so what you're gonna see is the QSysOper message center here on the right, and then I've also launched the resource monitor status screen. All right, so that's under tools, preferences, you'll see some options for automatically launching some of these uh, displays. Uh, also down here in the lower right hand corner in the system tray is a little robot console message notifier icon. All right, so that's optional, but uh, if you do have the console GUI going on your desktop and a message comes in, uh, you can be notified right through, uh, right through the GUI. So what we wanna do is just drill into this job. So I'm gonna right click, I'm in the message center called QSIS Opera and uh, there's an option down here that I honestly don't think a lot of people know about, and that's the display a job option. So rather than going to the green screen and trying to find the job behind the scenes that caused this message, I can simply right click on the message, go to display job, and I could drill into, for instance, the job log. All right, so here's the, the live job log, and I can also double click on any of these messages and get the first and second level message text. Terry, anything to add? Sorry, Chuck, I, I was on I was on mute talking to myself. No, nope, nope, that looks good. Okay. Okay, so that's that's gem number one. Let's go to gem number two, Terry. Uh, gem number two, this is this is actually one of my favorite. How can we make that critical information message stand out? 
Hughes's opera is so wordy. And for some reason, IBM decided that, hey, some of these really important messages like disk unit issues, storage threshold, those, let's make those informational so they blend. And you might not see them with all the other fluff out there. So here, just trying to find that disk unit. This one is fairly easy because it's right at the top. But if that thing was buried further, it's very difficult and you miss these errors and you know we've all had it bad things happen when you yep. miss an important error like that won't say it ever happened to me one. but maybe <laughs> there's another message in here that kind of disturbs me mm-hmm so yeah, Chuck. maybe a maybe a critical service profile got disabled exactly exactly or Chuck forgot his password for how long so how do we how do we make these stand out well, in the message center, if you're in there viewing, what you can do is you can change that critical message. So we're seeing the CPI 0920. Now we have made this through console a response required message. So that means that when you see this message in the center, you actually have to reply to it and say you've seen it. It's gonna stick out in red. You can make it flash red at you. You can do a bunch of other things. And we can also then warn you with robot alert. As we saw earlier, we'll send you a quick email. Now, the cool thing about making it response required is not only does it make you notice it quicker, but it tells you who is working on the problem. So when they respond to it, if Chuck replies to this, I know Chuck should be working on it. If my system should crash, I'm throwing Chuck under the bus oh, because there you go. <laughs> he told me he was working on it. Sorry, All Chuck. Right. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> Self-defense. Okay, and we've actually made this very, very easy for you to automate these messages. So they come into the message center, and you're like, oh my God, this CRA message. I have to know this is happening, especially if it's, if it's Tom Huntington. We know he's up to something, right? So what you can do is you can right-click on that, and you can go into message set maintenance. Message set maintenance then takes you directly in to the message set properties, and it creates those instructions for you. You notice we give it a name, and we, we call it the name of the message ID, which is what I like to do. It's easier than to find it later on. Give it a description, and by default, if it's an informational message, we make it response required. You can change these just by selecting the tabs crossed here. Now remember, a message set will never run unless you release it. So you can create that thing and it's awesome. But if you don't release it, it's not going to do anything. Good point. Okay. So my job is to show how to do this, Terry. Yes. Okay. Thank goodness, Chuck. That. You're good at this. All right. Turn off my annotation and we'll dive in. So, um, so here's an example. Um, the CPF 1240 message, job ended abnormally. That's a message that is informational, shows up in QSIS Opper, and you know what? You might want to know about that. So we've created a rule to turn this into a response required message. All right, and as Terry said, when this happens, the escalation process in Robot Console will send it out via Robot Alert. And then uh, if you're using the GUI to acknowledge messages so that they don't continue to escalate, you would simply click on the reply button and confirm that you have seen or read this message, all right? So it's not what I'd say, uh, uh, it's not an inquiry message, it's kind of a pseudo inquiry message, we call it response required, all right? So there's only one message waiting and that's that informational or that inquiry message uh, from the previous example, but let's go to today's messages, all right? So this is a way to filter your data. These are all the messages that uh, have happened other than the ones that we suppress from Robot Console, so that's one of the things we do is we can suppress messages uh, so that they don't go into our history files. So for instance, uh, we have a uh, encryption product for IBM I called PowerTech Encryption, and it puts out these audit messages. And this was the example that Terry was showing uh, in the slide deck. So to make this a response required message, you'd simply right click on it. You'd go to Message Set Maintenance. And you can see it has created a message set for us. And all I have to do now is go to unconditional instructions, change it to response required. 
All right, now notice the message sets on, on hold, CRA 9898, so I'll say okay. And then it's simply a matter of going into the message set instruction. All right, these are the rules. And find that CRA message right here. Right click on it and say release set. All right. All right, so the next time that that message happens now, it's going to show up as a uh, message that's waiting for some kind of reply. It's gonna escalate out via robot alert. And so everybody will know that, you know, there might be some mischievous activity going on with uh, encryption on your system. All right, well, gem number three. Number three, but I wanna mention something real quick. Sure. We do ship two tables that you're gonna love to use. The auto suppress, which suppresses automatically informational messages that over the years people say, we hate. So we're giving you some tools immediately to help you cut down on that fluff. And we have one called auto inquiry. And this table has informational messages that again, customers have told us we really need to be alerted on these. So they're already in there. Just look through them and determine which ones you need, remove the ones you don't, Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. All right. Okay. I love this. I love so, this message. User profile destroyed, destroyed. Terry. Destroyed. I know. I, I've never destroyed a user profile. I've destroyed <laughs> other things, but not a user profile. Okay. So back to work, Chuck. Um, so we're going to look at um, automating standard message processes. So, you know, the CPA 5305, this is one I always like to pick on because we get it a lot. And you know, typically you have a specific way you're going to reply to this one. This is record, not add it. Got a file full or a member full. Now, a lot of people put this in their system reply list, which is, is totally fine unless that job goes into a loop. Bad things can happen when jobs go into a loop and you're automatically replying to it saying, give it more, give it more, give it more. And eventually the system says, out of more. And something happens, right? So. What you want to do with these procedures is you want to create a message set in Robot Console. Now, my favorite hidden gem in console is Opal. Operator Assisted Language, it is a case tool for CL. So we tell you the logic operates you can use, the variables you can use, the operations. We supply all that. You just got to supply the logic and tell us what you want to do. So in here, what we're doing with the CPA 5305 is we're saying, if we've seen this message three times, so less than four, and the job that issued the message is in a table called jobs, so we're, we're narrowing it down to only a few jobs, we're gonna enter I. We're then gonna page the programming staff, and we're gonna send an SNMP trap up to our enterprise manager. Now, once this occurs the fourth time, we're not going to reply to this guy. It's going to sit in the center unreplied to. It's going to page you through the center and somebody is actually going to have to investigate why this job is asking for more and more and more. But we're also saying if var1, which happens to be the variable for the file, if that's in a table called files, we're going to enter i. Again, we're going to page and we're going to send a trap. Now this one has no repeat, so we're going to do it as often as we've allowed the message set to run. So we might have allowed this set to only run 10 times. This Any other a, thing, we're going to page. This is a pretty sophisticated rule, Terry. It is. There, there's a lot of information in that, in that rule. We're limiting it very specifically to certain jobs and certain files so that it doesn't get carried away. Okay, so here's the message out there. It has uh, been replied to by the message set one time. So you can see it says message set replied to it. After that, it didn't reply to it. So now it's waiting. It's going to send an alert out to Chuck, who hopefully is going to do something. Uh, hopefully is paying attention, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, robot alert will reach out and tap you on the shoulder. It does. Okay, so what we thought we'd do here is we would show you the message set CPA 5305 that we just saw in the uh, the slide deck slightly modified. 
and then we're going to go about doing some some simulation or testing so yes we do see this quite often in the system reply list and it makes us a little bit nervous uh, but everybody's you know i think everybody out there has seen this and you know one of the reasons we want to send out notification when this message happens is so that your development staff can go back in and change the file so that you don't continue to get this file increment message uh, so rather than sending out a uh, SNMP trap, we're just sending a page. So this is what the Opal looks like, truly a fine gem in uh, the product. So yes, we're looking at a number of repeats. We are looking at a table called jobs, and that's an Opal table that you populate yourself. And likewise, we have another table called files. And the enter operation, is how you reply to a message and then the page is how you send an email through robot alert so we're going to look to see what job it is and what files and then we're, then and only then are we going to increment the file so just Chuck, a yep could you go back to that message set just for a second sure i can. want to point out one thing i mentioned go to extended set ah yeah okay if you do not have the repeat in your opal the extended set information this says how many times a message set is allowed to run if it's the same exact message issued by the same job so it cannot go into a loop even if you don't have the repeat in opal we do have a relief valve built in yes exactly and one final note on opal all of those are promptable so you can prompt every one of those columns and any command you put under operation values promptable you just have to click the drag down there you go yeah there you go excellent yeah, it's an awesome okay. tool so just taking a look at the two tables we've got a table of files all right so we're going to increment based on these files all right and then we're going to be also incrementing based on these jobs all right so how do we go about testing that uh, another hidden gem potentially if you've never seen this before is to send a test message all right so what we can do is we can set up different scenarios all right so for instance um, I'm gonna show you here we've got variable one is uh, a file called GL post program is GL 100 the job name is accounting or the library name is accounting live etc so you can populate the variables in the message with different values to test your automation rather than waiting around for the message to actually happen all right, so I've got another one here, AR102. All right, so let's go ahead and send out a couple of tests. We'll start with this GL post. We'll send this, and then it says, well, where do you want to send it? We're, we'll send it right to QSIS Opera to keep Terry on her, on her toes. I'm watching it. All right, and then I'm going to send uh, another test to QSIS Opera. All right, and let's send one more. Okay, I've sent out three tests. Notice I just got one pop up here in my system tray and I'll refresh my message center. And you can see one of those three messages that I sent out was not automated. All right, AR102 was not automated. Now let's go back to today's messages. And you'll see the GL post was automatically replied to by the message set and likewise the orders member was. And if I double click on that, It'll take me into the details, and if you go to the reply option, you can see what message set replied to the message, what the reply value was, and so forth. And then right down here, you'll see that the message was replied to using an Opal, and you know that due to the, the message set identifier for the job. Terry, any other tips on this? Well, and on this screen, this is one I use a lot because folks will call and say, who replied to this? Mm -hmm. This will track that reply for anybody. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to rat out who replied to yeah, that. Yeah, like, like here's one. This is a impromptu message that was replied to earlier. Uh, the message happened at 8 a.m. And if I click on the reply, uh, oh, it was actually replied to automatically by the job. But if somebody mm -hmm. else did reply, you'd see how long it was out here and what the reply value was. That's a really good point. The history file in Robot Console is very, very powerful to answer those questions who answered that darn message right right and you can look in and see who's replied to it and how they've replied to it for as long as it's in history 
So if you're not familiar with that message, you can see who replied to it. Maybe contact them and say, hey, Chuck, why'd you do this? Or you got a good idea on how to reply to it. It's a good audit trail. So, yes, it is. It's an awesome audit trail. All right, okay. let's talk about resource monitoring. Oh my goodness, resource monitoring. So I, I know we can't see a show of hands, but how many of you out there have to sit out there and look at your systems to make sure these critical jobs started after IPL or they're continuing to run? Your, your subsystems are up and going. You don't have job queues backed up just before you start your, your nightly processing. All of these things can impact how things are occurring on your system and how many emails, how many calls you get because so-and-so calls and says, hey, Chuck, why didn't my job run? Where is it at? And Chuck, you know, if you had resource monitoring, we'd tell you right away. So with resource monitoring, we can, ch we can check those processes that don't issue messages, like a job didn't start, a job queue's backing up. You tell us what you want to monitor, how often you want to monitor it, and what its expected status is. I will tell you jobs and job queues are the, the top two that we monitor. And then we go to subsystems. So very great, does it automatically for you. So Terry, take us through the flow a little bit. Let's say something bad happens, something's not active. <laughs> so you create your resource and it's monitoring to make sure that this subsystem called POS monitor is active. We check that whatever priority you have. So say we set it for five minutes. So every five minutes we're out there and we're going, is that subsystem active? Is it active? If it is not active, we immediately issue a message. And in this case, it's SBS0001. Console picks up that message just like it was a message coming in from QSIS Opera. And we can run our OPAL message set against it. So here we're saying if VAR5 is in table, and Chuck talked about the in tables, so if that subsystem is in this table, we're going to automatically execute a start subsystem. Now you notice we're using VAR5. We're not using the subsystem name. That's because we can dynamically replace that variable value in the command. So here we're going to start the subsystem POS monitor. We're pulling that from the resource name. We're going to modify our user text that we're going to send out to the page. We're going to say, hey, POS monitor subsystem has been restarted. So that Chuck knows exactly what we're doing when um, that resource comes about. You can do this with any resource out there. Okay, this is this is getting exciting now, Terry. Let's do it. Oh, I love resources. I'm and telling I, you, it is uh, awesome. And I need to go to the green screen too. So let's start this way. So first of all, on the left-hand side here, I have the resource monitor status screen. So these are all the various resources that I'm checking, jobs, job queues, subsystems, out queues, object existence, and, and, and so forth. I have a subsystem called POS monitor. It's my point of sale monitor subsystem that has to be active. And if it's not, uh, my transactions from my website might not be happening. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to end that POS monitor and what's going to happen is another message set is going to kick in and it's right here. And uh, let's drill into this. So what I'm going to be looking for is my subsystem message. When that happens, and this is the subsystem is not in the expected state message, what's going to happen is my Opal is going to kick in. And I've modified the OPA a little bit to only look at two subsystems. All right, I'm only looking at the Q programmer and, and POS monitor subsystem, and then I'm executing the start subsystem command. So, Terry, this is self-healing, right? Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's going to fix it for you before somebody calls you. Yeah, right. and and you know, actually, on my green screen right now is another form of our robot console notification you might not know about, but we can actually send break messages to the green screen multiple people could get break messages in their green screen. But anyway, let's do a work subsystem command and you can see my POS monitor subsystem is active. I'm gonna do an end subsystem, POS monitor star IMMED, all right? And you can see the, the subsystem is gone, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is uh, rather than waiting for my POS monitor checking to take place in robot console, might 
be every minute, two minutes or whatever. I'm gonna do a check status. All right, so I got a pop up here that says the subsystem isn't active. That's gonna show up in my uh, message center as well. All right, the subsystem is not active. And so what we should expect to see now is that subsystem get auto restarted. And look at that. The it's subsystem, magic. It's magic. That was kind of magic. Oh, you pulled so, a rabbit right out of the hat, Chuck. So uh, in my uh, in my resource monitoring uh, status screen, it says currently not active, and I'll just do a I'll force a check in the GUI. All right. It says yes, it's back to active. Cool stuff. If you want to learn more about this. Uh, we've got a number of webinars around resource monitoring, and uh, certainly we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go to number five. Yeah, number five, IFS log monitoring. This is the one thing we're showing you right now that is a GUI-only process. Everything else is um, doable green screen, but this is a GUI-only process. So with application log monitoring, what we're allowing you to do is to look in those IFS logs for specific errors. So you tell us what log you care about, you give us the path, so here you can see this is slash home web orders slash orders and it has a an asterisk so it's a generic. So you give us the path that we're going to go monitor and then you set it up and tell us what do I care about. So in this web order IFS log my log data, I'm looking for it to contain inventory error. If that statement is in there, it's going to send me a message, the A018001. So it sends a unique message for every one of these log data that you're uh, putting in your application log monitor. That message is going to go just like QSIS opera messages, resource messages. That's going to go to a message center. And in that message center, you can then react to that message. So here we've got a message set that Chuck created. And we're building basically a user table. So we're saying here's user text. We're doing second level text of this message. And then we're executing a send message out to a specific user. And we're making it response required so that you're aware immediately that that web inventory has issues and you can Oops. react to it oh yeah yep and um, so uh, you know another tip is that initially messages for IFS log monitoring go to a different message center it's called RBC ALMQ so rather than QSIS OPER they go to this message uh, center which you can redirect to QSIS OPER and that's what we've done in our example so let's let's take a look at that Terry and we like to, we do have mes different message centers for application logs and um, history logs and that, but I always recommend try putting them in one specific center so you're not jumping around everywhere. Yep, so in the for those messages. Yep, I agree completely. So under monitored objects, application log monitoring, you would simply do a right click and then add a new uh, application log monitor. And so we've got one here called web orders, all right? And it's looking at uh, this subdirectory and the home directory, looking for any log files that say orders something. We're looking at the log files every three minutes and uh, just drilling into the properties, a number of things you can do, including defining fields within your log files, but the filters set up the relationship with the message ID. So for instance, we already looked at the web uh, inventory. I've also got a, a web orders where order number's not found. So if we actually went and looked at the data in that IFS file, of course, you're gonna see some of these examples. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the log monitoring to start, and I'm actually gonna start over processing all my log files so you can see what the, the messages look like. All right, and while those are processing, we'll look at the message ID that is processing those messages, and they're right here, all right? So there's actually two messages, and I've made those messages uh, uh, response required under unconditional, all right? And so let's go over here, 
and we'll refresh. Oh, we gotta wait 15 seconds for them to happen. We might not wanna wait that long, Terry. Let's see if I can bring them up um, from our message center. Here it is. Let's see if they're there. Okay, we, there we're not go. gonna wait for them to show up uh, in our Acusis Opera. Actually, they've been redirected now, haven't they? Maybe they will show up there. Yeah, there they are. There all right, so there's there's mm -hmm. all our, we had a 15 second delay from uh, uh, redirecting the messages, but those are all the message IDs from that IFS file. Cool deal, so we've we've intercepted those, we've, we're being proactive uh, about sending those to someone who cares, an interested party, rather than waiting for somebody to pick up the phone and call and say, you know what, I'm not getting my web orders. What can we do about that? All right. So another interface that you can use, we've been using the GUI throughout, has been Insight. Insight's been available for the robot product line now for a number of years, and it's our answer to browser and mobile access to a number of our robot and power tech products. It's installed in a Windows or Linux server. It connects using a JDBC connection back to your various IBM I partitions. I'm being plural there. And it allows you to answer messages, to work with robot jobs, uh, and so forth. And uh, so let's do that. Let's let's get rid of the GUI. And I will bring up Insight. All right. So I, this is browser access, and it's using a responsive design. So you'll see here that. When I do bring up Robot Console in this case, here's my outstanding messages with my web orders messages. If I'm looking at this on an iPhone or a tablet or something, you will see it changes based on the landscape that's available. All right. So I can look at my, um, my messages. I can go into resource monitoring status. All right. I could also create a dashboard that contains all of my robot console, robot reports, robot schedule, power tech, exit point information, all in one place. And then there's robot network. All right, so we mentioned robot network uh, right at the beginning of the webinar where robot network is the consolidation backbone. This is where all of your events coming from all your robot products, all your monitoring can be consolidated to. All right, so for instance, uh, Q programmer is not active. Okay, so that's coming from my academy system. I could actually answer any of the messages from any of my IBM I partitions directly from this robot network interface. All right, so it's our consolidation backbone. All right, so that's just a little bit about um, robot network and uh, ro using robot console with network. We'd love to talk to you more about that. Uh, at this point, Terry, I'm going to bring up our follow-up question. All right, let's do that. So how can we help you? All right, maybe you'd like a robot console alert demo. Maybe you need help right now. Uh, let's do a proof of concept. Um, how about a console alert health check? So if any of you would like us to spend an hour with you to talk about how you're using Robot Console, is it being cleaned up? Is it doing everything it could be? We can do a Robot Console health check, totally free, totally free. So if anything, I would recommend that you, if you're already a Robot Console alert um, user, that we uh, do a health check for you. Otherwise, you know, feel free to select anything else. Terry, we've got about one minute left. What are typical questions that we get from, uh, during support calls, for instance, of, around robot console and alert. Around robot console, um, I get I get some resource questions. Of course, how do I set up these resources? But what if I have something I want to check that's not one of our shipping resources? How can I check that? Like maybe a user profile being signed on. You can do user defined programming in resources. So you create your own program, you attach it to console, and we start doing the checking for you. So that's kind of a common one I get. Um, I, I do get a number of questions about just setting up message sets and the order that message sets would run in, whether it's um, you know a single message set or a table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and most importantly, 
how do I clean up my console history? Because it doesn't do it automatically. So just remember, run the RBC delete his command. Make sure you're running that, whether it's in robot schedule or some other job uh, scheduling. You've got to automate that history cleanup. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last tip for our participants. Uh, we have something called IBM I Insiders, and you can get it at it through insiders.helpsystems.com, and it's your central repository for educational resources, best practice resources, discussion forums. You can submit product feedback and so forth. There's exclusive training out there, training opportunities, and uh, ultimately, it's uh, kind of the, uh, there's a motivational aspect to it. So you know, the more you do, the more rewards you earn. And um, it's been up and running now for a while, and and it's actually been a lot of fun. So uh, I'd offer everybody a chance now to go out and register it there and uh, and hunt around and see what you can find. It's kind of fun. Terry, thanks for your time today. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for inviting me. And thanks for doing the. Uh, you know, 30, 28 years of product support ah, yes, here at Help System. Exactly. It's, it's been fun. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for participating. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye.